Well, uh, uh, Dennis Rodman, of course, our ambassador <laughs> to um, North Korea. Uh, how many people actually go over there from the United States and, and, and chat, especially uh, anyone of any note? You know, you're a lot. There, there's ways to get in there. One of Jonathan's friends went, and they they do something. It's uh, it's like a hundred thousand people. I forget what it's called. It's a it's a, a display they do, where uh, it's kind of uh, what is what is it called when the bunch of people are in the in the stands of a football game and they all flip the card over to say the same thing. Oh right, I've seen that. Like you know, like, yellow, blue, whatever it is. Yeah. They do a display like this. That's amazing. It's in North Korea. It's yeah, yeah. one of the greatest things. Yeah, Humanity great. has ever figured uh, out. It's, it's great because uh, that—that's what you get when, if you make a mistake, you're fucking beaten and tortured. Well, <laughs> if that card doesn't flip over at the right time, get the person in seat the ninety seat to L. And then they just fucking ravage him on the field. Have you seen it? Yeah, it's great. It's, oh yeah, amazing. it's fucking amazing what yeah. they do. I don't know what it's called. What do I uh, look for? North, North Korea. Give me search keywords. North Korea. Card flip. Card flip display. Just card or, flip. Yeah. Or oh, card flipping. There you go. Oh. See? see. Oh, you don't know how to Google. No, I'm trying to pick a good one. Any of them, okay. I guess. <laughs> Hundred thousand people they get for this. in the state, but like, because there's nothing else to do or that's, watch there. Yeah, that's it. Poor fuckers. You're right. Even those people, like they've been so oppressed for so long, I don't even think they'd know what what to do with them. Um, you know, freedom and 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 choice and things like that. Some people just can't deal with it. It seems like a boring existence. Like yes. A, Boring. Everywhere you go, you're you're escorted by guards. Yeah. Yeah, that's a hundred thousand people in the back there. Jesus, you just got to It looks like a big video screen. Yeah, but it's, it's all people. So, and giant, yeah. uh, it's people with different colored cards. Just flip them up and make words in that wacky writing. Yeah, and it and then it's like people dancing on the field in various uh, uh, costumes. What a fucking strange culture. And it's about the history of North Korea. Like right now we're looking at just all these people in these weird costumes. But it looks like a giant TV screen in the back and it's yeah. fucking people holding cards in seats. <laughs> oh, there's um are those some of the card people? I don't know if they're the card people or if they're watching. Oh. I think they're just watching with their approved haircuts. You know, he, <laughs> oh, you see the flip? <laughs> yeah. The fucking It's amazing. They're uh it's so odd that it's very hard to get a dialogue going with people that we really don't understand their culture. It really is. Like, this is so odd that we don't even care if they want to kill us and we want to kill them or anything. It's it's so much easier to destroy people that you just don't have any clue what the fuck their life is about. It's like a big college football game. That's all it is. Eh, yeah, but there's something <laughs> very devious behind it. <laughs> well, thank goodness we have ambassadors now. Like Dennis Rodman, who uh, went over there. And actually hung out with Kim Jong Un. Uh, they they watched uh, some basketball. Apparently, Kim Jong Un is a, a very big fan of the basketball and the Bulls for some reason. Really, they're fans. Him and Kim Jong Il, I guess, with, with oh. fans of the Bulls. Oh, probably because he preps them many, <laughs> many times. A little shorty. <laughs> uh, yeah, big basketball fan, Bulls fan. And then Dennis Rodman goes over there. I guess Vice sent him? Vice, uh, Vice uh, arranged it. I don't know how they pulled it off. but uh, Amazing. Yeah, I, I can't fucking believe they got him in. Yeah. And obviously out, too. There's, always, there's a story of some filmmakers that Kim Jong-il liked. They were Chinese or they were South Korean or whatever. Mm. They, for some reason, they went there and he kidnapped them. They were like a husband and wife team. And he just made them make movies in that country. <laughs> Holy shit. Yeah. Make movies yeah, I for forget, me. I, I wish I knew the story. Can you see kidnapped filmmakers? For yeah, for North Korea, wow, got it? I think I do. <clears throat> that's the that's fucking crazy. But the, you know, there's nothing you're gonna do, no, like because the U.S. Or, where any country is not gonna go to war there's to really get no. one citizen out. You want to go to war? <laughs> yeah, you see Obama banging down the phone, doing coke <laughs> off the table. <laughs> I got to get organized. <laughs> Hangs up the phone. You know, him and his wife. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was his idea of getting organized. Yeah, That's right. Exactly. I got to get organized. 50, and he hangs up the phone. Fifty Colombians coming with machine guns, and you're <laughs> fucking straightening up the phone. And, and you, you know you, the picture might be crooked. Yeah, well, I got to get organized. What's it say about them? Is it? Uh, this is a long piece oh, of it because okay. I guess he eventually mm. wrote a memoir, which is probably really interesting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Him and, his, him and his wife were wow. filmmakers. Um, huh? And uh, the he kidnapped. <laughs> Them to just have yeah, did them they make go movies. there for some reason? Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna have to. Read it's it so out. funny if Dennis Rodman got kidnapped. Like, <laughs> oh no, I care. Found out because he was supposed to do Celebrity Apprentice yeah. press or something. Yeah. 
He's just fucking owning their basketball team. Well, that's the risk. <laughs> out there. Go ahead, play. I want you to play for me now every day. That's the risk you take when you go there. It's like, chances are it's not going to happen. Okay. But this is a dictator. How great would it be if we went to war to save Dennis, Dennis Rodman? Rodman. <laughs> uh, turns nuclear. Yeah. Like, everyone had this concept of what would cause a worldwide nuclear war, and it's Dennis Rodman. It's the worm. The worm did it. Story? Yeah. Okay. So, uh, his... His ex-wife was kidnapped from Hong Kong to North Korea. Hong Kong? Uh, Do you know, I heard something about Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. One time, King Kong went to Hong Kong to play ping pong, apparently using his ding dong. Wow. I heard that. Wow. That wasn't true, though. What happened was King Kong got hung up in customs. Oh. All right. So so I, I, here's what I figured. If one guy bombs, I should jump right in with him. <laughs> Thanks for the company. You're welcome. It just looks really lonely down there. <laughs> uh, hey. Right, so his, his ex-wife uh, was an actress. Mm -hmm. um, this guy's name is Shin Sang Okay. So that, okay? Probably yeah, he, I mean, he needs work on his yeah. vocals. <laughs> <laughs> so she was kidnapped from Hong Kong to North Korea. Shin traveled to Hong Kong to investigate, and he was kidnapped as well. The kidnappings were on the orders of future leader Kim Jong-il, who wanted to establish a film industry for his country to sway international opinion regarding the views of the workers' That's how party. how you do Korea. it. Yeah. So uh, North Korean authorities denied kidnapping him. Claiming that he came to the country willingly, of course. Ah, could, and how do they? Gonna, how are they going to prove it? You know, it's like yeah, uh, yeah you're not, not, you're going you're to give a non-state approved uh -huh. interview. He was put in comfortable accommodations, but after an escape attempt, because you know he was there willingly. Yeah, uh, he was placed in prison. Oops. He was brought to Just stayed in his gilded uh, cage. In '83, he mm -hmm. learned why he had been brought to North Korea. That was five years after he had been kidnapped. <laughs> they didn't uh, tell him. Yeah. His ex-wife was brought to the same dinner party where she first learned that her ex-husband was actually in North Korea. Wow. They remarried shortly afterwards, as suggested by Kim Jong-il. From 83, Shin directed seven films with Kim Jong-il acting as an executive producer. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Do you know how fucking frustrating his notes must have been? Oh, man. <laughs> well, in the, in the love scene, it should be the leader. All right. All the right. Leader. Good point. All right. Are yeah. you taking notes from that fucking idiot? Fantastic <laughs> leader is the main love interest <laughs> in the movie again. Yes, the star should be short and homely and have poor eyesight. I heard you. <laughs> uh, the best known of these films was a giant monster film similar to Godzilla. In 86, after, eight years after his kidnapping, Shin and his wife escaped while in Vienna for a film festival. He kidnapped a filmmaker that makes Godzilla move type movies? Yeah, pretty much. But he let him go to Vienna for a film festival? Lunatic. I guess. They managed to seek political asylum in the United States Embassy before they were found out. Kim Jong-il became convinced that the couple had been kidnapped by the Americans. Oh, see? <laughs> how do you fucking let them go yeah. to Vienna? Know. Like, how delusional are you that's to their loyalty? Delu yeah, that's being Just delusional. Back. That's being delusional. There's a, there's a story of a woman named Colleen Stan who was kidnapped by a couple, a married couple in California while she was hitchhiking. Mm -mm. And they held, held her captive for seven years. Wow. Made her a sexual slave. It's a very claustrophobic story where they would put her in a coffin-like contraption under their bed. Oh, I heard about this. And there was yeah. times where she had to sleep with like a fucking head box on. Like, it, it, I read it like I was crawling out of my skin. Yeah, the head box. <sighs> and she eventually escaped years later because they, they had her believe that it was this white slavery thing. But they let her, they, they eventually, at one point, they let her go see her family. See her family. And then she, she came back because she was so brainwashed. She believed that there was a white slavery ring and her family would be killed. Did she have to fill out that contract, a, too? A slave she had a contract. slave contract that she had to fill out. And, uh, they were, yeah, they threatened her, her family and whatnot. It's just w weird, uh, Perfect how, victim, I think the book is how called. How people can just buy that shit. <laughs> but she was so brainwashed, and eventually they, uh, like, they, they went away one time, and they left her in the fucking coffin, oh, and it was so hot Jesus. that she actually kicked through and broke out, but stayed there. And what uh, an idiot! But I, I, I don't comprehend. Just it wanted to get out of the coffin. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, oh. they, well, they they were eventually letting her stay in the bathroom, handcuffed. Yeah. And then one of their kids saw it, so it was right back in the coffin for a couple of years. It's something called the Helsinki syndrome, I believe. Yeah. I have no idea what it's called. Oh, Stockholm. Well, Stockholm. Yeah, I know Stockholm. <laughs> you can know, empathize with your kidnappers. Yeah, I was. I was just some line from Die Hard where he meant the, the guy in the news mentions the wrong country. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think Stockholm. The, damn it. Yes, I know. The husband got greedy and wanted more slaves, so the wife just couldn't, didn't want to deal with that, and fucking wow. told the girl like you can, and then she escaped and and, and whatever. But that's what happened. I guess like they they probably figured that these two wouldn't go.
How did oh. I just ruin the whole show? I'm sorry. No, no. no I, I love shit like I'm, that. I'm reading about it. Oh. Now, um, now, of course, Dennis Rodman goes over there um, as a representative of the United States. <laughs> Why and, can't you say that with a straight face? Because it, it, I saw the clips. <laughs> He's fucking retarded. Now, do you want to play the clips that Sam has pulled, or do you just want to watch the video? Well, let's... Um, Let's watch some of the video. Okay. I want to. I want to get like the full impact of what his dumb face looks like. Of course, he's got the piercing in the middle of his lower lip. He's got a piercing in each nostril. Uh, his tats all over, of course. And um, yeah. And, and yeah. George Stephanopoulos is here, and he's talking to the one guy yeah. in America who's had you know, like interactions with this dictator. Had that to sit everybody's- down. And he has to sit there and ignore the fact <laughs> that he's a fucking that he's retarded. Yeah, that he's an idiot. He's actually interviewing him as he would a politician, a diplomat. You yeah. know how much they wish this was Abdul Jabbar mm. or Jordan <laughs> or any right? player, Anyone. but him. Well, yeah, I've I've noticed um, it, he he is a bit unstable. Um, he there are certain commonalities like basketball that um, uh, we share with. That would be like what you would want to hear. The United Not States like, would be happier if it was Muggsy Bogues <laughs> that went over there. He ain't want no wall. <laughs> I see, I play some uh, yeah, yeah, play some of this. It's uh, great. George Stephanopoulos. Weirdest encounter. Top of the news in North Korea. <laughs> is that? The first American to Louder. Not John Kerry or even Jimmy go. Carter. Nope. It was Dennis Rodman, <laughs> a.k.a. The Worm. They watch basketball. Kim is a big fan, but that was just the beginning. Some ice skating, too. An aquarium visit. <laughs> Then a long dinner and lots of drinks uh. with one of the world's most mysterious and dangerous men. I love him. I love the guy's awesome. It was He's awesome. He was so honest. That about a dictator honest. who presides over prison camps, allows millions <laughs> to starve, and is threatened Pause to destroy second. the United States. <laughs> this is what annoys me about, like, Stephanopoulos. Yeah. How many fucking dictators have we been friends with? Ah, very good. Because they yeah. did things that we You're want. Right. We, come on, stop it. Why, You're right. That's why I don't like them. We don't talk to these guys. We had no problem with who was the guy that fucking ran Zaire? Mobutu for all those Mobutu. years. Mobutu. You know, because these guys give you access to the fucking mineral mines. Uh-huh. We, we have a plenty of dog in shit. In the Middle East, we're fucking, you know, in, in bed with uh, people that absolutely yeah. uh, kill uh, women and uh, homosexuals and and um, China. Yeah, we're we're in bed with China and and as far as their death camps and um, uh, human rights policies go. Uh, but uh, yeah, you're right. As long as there's something in it for us, then we could do business with them. This fucking or we were from. Uh, uh, um uh, Musharraf in fucking Pakistan, whose own people hated. Yeah, but the, you phonies like this Stephanopoulos take this high road. We shouldn't go talk to Kim Jong Un. What the fuck has he done to America? Well, like, he might be a cunt. Yeah, but what has he done to us that's so terrible? It's um actually his father. Um, the extortion thing's pretty good. How he he threatens um uh, free sure. countries with nuclear weapons and then says, well, I'll stop if you give us a bunch of money. <laughs> hey, it's a great move. Why shouldn't why shouldn't he do that? He sees us fucking handing over two hundred fifty million dollars to Egypt or fucking money to the Syrian rebel. Why the fuck shouldn't they get the he money? Keeps to a, a constant um, loaded gun pointed at uh, South Korea, which is one of our uh, allies. Yeah, of fuck course. them too. They're not even grateful uh. for us. Fuck them. <laughs> fuck the South Koreans. They want the troops out. They're yeah, sick of yeah. the troops. Yeah. I I think we should be out of there. Fuck the DMZ. It's not our problem. Yeah. I don't care if Kim Jong-un goes in and takes it. I don't give a fuck. I don't think he could at this point. No, China's not, not. going to back North Korea anymore. You don't think? Yeah. No, that was like a, that was a big thing, obviously, uh, during the Korean War. The, the problem was in North Korea. We could have fucking devastated them. It was China. Just came fucking bunch of million screaming Chinese oh. flying over the border. But now, I absolutely think China is so entrenched in capitalism at this point that... They look more how it would affect their economy than how it would affect maybe a communist ally like North Korea in yeah, this I day think and they've age. They've got like a one track mind. Where right. They, they know that their economy is going to express be, to yeah. fucking riches. That's what they're all about these days. They're not the old 50s communist China anymore. They are a, a powerhouse. It's amazing. More billionaires now in Asia than in the 
Um, the Americas. Oh, really? Yeah, it's fucked up. So just this attitude. He keeps death camps. He does. The, who gives a fuck? I like how <laughs> all it takes is basketball and drinks for Dennis Rodman to just think you're an awesome guy. You know and an aquarium. <laughs> and an aquarium. Uh, the yeah. aquarium must have been fun. He's awesome. <laughs> I think Dennis Rodman just walking around with a balloon of a killer whale. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> looking all silly. <laughs> <laughs> Make him splash sharks. me. <laughs> yeah, he splashes them all. Yeah, but the water gets on Kim Jong Un. He has the fucking whale killed. Yeah, but it's not even the whale doing it. It's a Korean guy in the water splashing away from the great leader. That's the great leader. That's what they call him, the great I know, leader. That's great. It is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A little Sorry. more of um, Dennis Rodman. Amazingly, Rodman now has more first hand impressions of Kim than any other American. There is nobody at the CIA who could tell you more personally about Kim Jong un than Dennis Rodman. Yeah, I'm with and the that company. In itself is scary. And Dennis Rodman joins us right now. I guess you don't find it scary. I, no, it's not scary. <laughs> it's amazing, suit. man. Wow, man. You know what? He was wearing a suit. It was such, with money uh, printed on it. A great experience. Uh, me and my, uh, I call him my son, Elkin King. Um, we went there, man, and it wasn't supposed to be like that. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be like, oh, just meet the guy and just have a good time. And it turned into such an event. And I have right. to ask you first, when you said you love Kim and think he's awesome, awesome. were you aware of his threats to destroy the United States and, and his regime's horrendous record on human rights? But, but one thing about that, you know what? I didn't look at all that right there. I understand uh, yeah. what he's doing. I don't condone that. Right. I hate the fact that he's doing that. But the fact of it is that, you know what? That's a human being, though. He let his scars down. He did one thing to me. Been a friend. I didn't talk about what that. country is Dennis Rodman that. from? Could you pause this for a moment? That. What country is he from? Are you having a hard time understanding? Uh, well, I'm denoting an accent. Where is he from? Yeah, uh, in the United States of America. Yeah. yeah. Oh, South. really? Yeah. He sounds South. almost Asian in that. Like he picked, like, yeah, picked, like up, he picked up the accent. Yeah. Figure out how many times he says uh, one thing. One thing. <laughs> <Throughout> <laughs> the, that's uh, his favorite thing. Here's the thing. Ah, uh, the one thing he did though. The one he thing he did, though. His friend. Yeah, he's from the country of Trenton, New Jersey. Oh. oh I didn't know he was a Jersey guy. He doesn't sound like he's from Jersey, but... Uh, all right, so... Oh, no, he has a horrendous human rights record. Oh, no! Like the Chinese? <laughs> Why do you say that to fucking every Secretary of State when they come back from China? <laughs> that is a great fucking point. Stupid it really is. Stephanopoulos. Like, like, this, of course, is the wacky story. You got crazy Dennis Rodman going over, the first American to really sit down and talk to this guy... Um, and he comes back with these stories about what a great guy he is, uh, because they just sat there and didn't talk about world events or anything. Yeah, talk about basketball. But the thing to do is to bash him like this and sure. bash Kim Jong Un, who is no better or worse than a lot of these motherfuckers that um, get away with literally murder. And these murder. jealous cunts in the media, they can't believe that this <laughs> lunatic. Got what they couldn't get, no one else couldn't get. Because again, yeah. how about how many people has Mike Wallace gone and talked to? He went and talked to the Ayatollah. So don't fucking of sit rock there. And roller? Yes, it was ah. really bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I just hate the way they're all this. We, we know who Kim Jong un is. Yeah. Stop prefacing, well, do you know that? Do you, we know. He does threaten uh, the United States, but he threatens everybody. He threatens yeah. Japan. Um, he, like, he likes to think of himself and his country as uh, a powerhouse in the world, a world leader. And that nuclear weapons thing is a, a big one uh, as far as uh, a country's power in the world. So he's trying to get that. But then when we say you can't have it, he goes, all right, well, you got to give me some, some of that money, and then we'll, we'll cut back on our uh, nuclear weapons program. He isn't going to do a fucking thing. He's just talking shit. He's like yeah. a loud kid that you have to give candy to to be quiet. And again... Oh, candy, what, by the way, is billions of American it dollars. It sure is. <laughs> and he gobbles it up. <laughs> but, uh, hey, look, the Russians threatened us with nuclear war for fucking 30 years. When did they just happen? didn't say it. Why wasn't I told? From fucking 1990 on. Oh. According to, you know, most films in Hollywood, that's the big <laughs> yeah, threat now. It's exactly. nuclear secrets. <laughs> well, that new uh, movie about the White House being taken over... Um, um, Yes, yes, that thing. Olympus down. Uh, thank you, whatever it is. Uh, they, uh, I guess the Koreans are the villain in that one. Uh -uh. The Koreans are the ones that take over the White House. I don't know why. Who do you think the villain's going to be when it's released in Korea? Uh, the, what they should be, which is the Arabs. <laughs> <laughs> the damn Arabs. You want more? Yeah, please. Yeah. I love it. Do you think you have a responsibility to ask him about it so that you don't be perceived as sort of propping up his regime, his cult of personality? Well, so <laughs> <I think laughs> <when you laughs> in an environment, especially when your grandpa... Cult and your, Pause, I'm and sorry to keep doing this. Again, would he be asking Angelina Jolie this if she went to some f into the Congo and talked to some uh, some dictator in the Congo? Goodwill ambassadors, it's not their job 
to go over there and fucking criticize the regime in a country mm. where you probably could not, you, you could be held there if he wanted to. Yeah. So stop, stop with this dumb shit. Well, I, I think a lot of times the government doesn't want these goodwill ambassadors to be used as propaganda for the leaders. Of course they're going to treat Dennis Rodman well. Of course they're going to let him come back here and uh, have these great stories about how awesome Kim Jong-un is because it, it's propaganda. It's, yeah. it's, it helps their cause. Um, in the long run, so I could see why he's doing that, but um, yeah, maybe yeah, it's yeah. I think that's the difference. Coming back and telling everybody that guy is awesome. awesome. What a great guy! He's amazing. <laughs> loves Basketball. the b-ball. Yeah, loves but, the b-ball. But how much of him being terrible is propaganda on our side? Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. how about you know these guys are made to, and a lot of them are monsters. But uh, if you come back and he actually treated you well. And you'll, so why shouldn't you just tell how it was? It's like, yeah, it's like we won't true. talk to the Iranians or Ahmadinejad. We're not going to talk to him. Why not? Mm -hmm. We don't have to like him, but you got to sit down with him. I guess when you assume that all you're going to get out of him is bullshit and um, and uh, propaganda and lies, that uh, there's no real need to give them the credibility of sitting down and talking to them. I, I don't know. I'm just uh, I'm just rambling. If we no, uh, but you're not no, even. If, if we were consistent, I would agree with you. Yeah. If we were 100 percent consistent and we didn't oh, all right, of a sudden yeah. become friendly with Gaddafi. <laughs> All of a sudden, he was our buddy. Oh, he's helping us. He's helping us now. <laughs> it's fucking crazy. We, you know, we wonder why everybody in the world's a twat, and we can't make up our mind who our friends are. Yeah. You're terrible. All right, we'll give you this. All right, come on over. All uh, right, you're our pal. <laughs> now, one thing, the kid's only 28 years old. You called them great leaders. Do you really believe no, that? No, what I saw in that country, I saw in that country, and I saw people respect him huh. and his family, that's what I mean about that. Aren't Great they forced leaders there. to? Huh? Aren't they forced to? <laughs> well, I say no because I think he's going to change <laughs> I say no. He says a, a different view. Because I sat with him for two days. Oh, and two one days. Thing, he asked me to give uh, Obama thing. something to say and do oh. one thing. Oh, here's the he message. He wants Obama to do one thing. Call him. <laughs> he wants a call from President Obama? <laughs> That's right. He told me that. He said, if you can, Dennis, I don't want to do war. I don't, I don't want, want to do war. He I said don't want to do war. Did you say, why don't you pick up the phone and call President Obama? No, you know, it's a different story. He it's said, war. Story because oh, guess what? Good the God, John. What is old. it? 28. Good. He's not his dad. Not his grandpa. He's 28 years old. So you think old. he's different. What did he tell you about America? And what did you learn he's, about him? Guess what? The one thing I said to him, I said, one thing. we talked about, it, if you see the clips or whatever, he loves basketball. Oh. And I said the same thing I said. Obama loves basketball. Let's start there. Let's start there. <laughs> see, Let's start the papers, there. He says that. He says that about sports. Both of you guys love basketball so much. So that's one tiny bit of common ground. Did you get any sense what from do you think of a Kobe? You know what? One States? little bit of tiny well, common ground. That's what motivates people to want to fucking change their countries. Mm -hmm. It's, it's mm -hmm. usually that pop culture shit. That, that gets the, the students rioting and crazy. It, it, it comes from, you know, if he would have said, oh, come on, Twitter. Well, who's going to use Twitter? That's what motivates people. It's yeah. all this weird social enjoyment stuff. And they're both fucking Bulls fans. Yeah, apparently ever since he took office, he's really promoted sports. Like, because he's such a big fan of sports. Yeah. He wants a relationship with the United States. He's not as far. He's a younger guy. He's a younger <laughs> maniac. Oh, he's, he's 28. He's so right. jealous yeah. of, uh, like, South Korea, I bet. Yeah. We, he's probably like, North Korea, we best Korea. Why no talk to us? I bet. And, and now he's trying to get Dennis Rodman to go back and, and tell him, just call. Just give him a cut. Do you see how he looked at the camera like he was talking to Obama? Just hey, call. Obama, just call the man. Obama, Obama got the message. Is Kim Jong un there? <laughs> <laughs> Leaves him a uh, message. <laughs> yeah. Hi, it's President Obama. Yeah, do you have 10-pound balls? <laughs> How do you walk? <laughs> All right. Little prank calls from the, the president. Uh, Prince Albert in a can? You better let him out. <laughs> well, no, Dennis says, yes, I do. I have Prince Albert on my cock. <laughs> I'm sure he does have a piercing. Hey, uh, Kim, is your refrigerator running? No, no power here. <laughs> we broke. <laughs> Shit, you ruined my, ruined my gag. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, you know, one great. thing I, I noticed about him, he's very humble. He's very humble, man. Humble. As, as humble. a kid, his he's fucking humble. portraits he's very, of him twenty feet high on every building. As a man, he's very strong. But he, guess what? He don't want war. That's one thing he don't he want. He said in the that. past that he would destroy the United States. Well, I, I just think that. I think that's coming hey, from so his father. Oh, I think 
as a young man, him, he, he don't want anything. What else does he know about the United States and President Obama from what you could tell? Well, I can tell about him. He does one thing. He, he, loves, he loves power. He's a humble guy. He loves power. Control and power. Of his, you know, dad and stuff like that. But he just, he's a great guy. He's just a great guy. If you great. sit down and talk to him, you know, perception is perceiving how things A great work. guy who puts 200,000 people in prison camps? <laughs> well, you know, and guess what? It's amazing how we do the same thing here. Oh, we have prison camps here in the United States? We don't States? have prison camps. Guess what? This is all politics, right? <laughs> this is all politics, right? <laughs> and the one thing, he don't want to do that. He don't want to do that. Uh -huh. But you know yeah. what, dude? It's more like it. I'm not like a, 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 a diplomat. I don't want to do really? that. Really? But it sounds like you're apologizing for him. Oh. No, I'm not apologizing for him. I think the fact that, you know, he's a good guy to me. Guess what? He's my friend. Guess what? I don't condone what he does, but as far as a person to person, Indy, you're my, my best friend. friend. This Let's fucking Stephanopoulos is a smug guy. You're, li you're not liking this, are you? Hating his guts. Mm. He's a smug cunt. Oh, a seven smug yeah. cunt. No, but he, That's what, he, what they put under his name. Look, on NBC News. <laughs> NBC News. He knows <laughs> the situation and the benefit of Rodman going over there. It's a door opening. It's a door opening into a country. We have Z We obviously give a fuck. Mm -hmm. We obviously want something or we wouldn't be on the, D the DMZ. We, we would not have fucking troops stationed there if there wasn't some concern about this guy. Uh -huh. So here's this fucking dumb pop icon who fucking walks in. <laughs> pop, pop, pop culture guy, I mean. Pop and icon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm in prison. That guy, I'm a pop icon. And he's the only contact we have yeah. with this. And all this fucking smug douchebag is doing. And he would never ask a fucking a, a politician this shit. He would never ask no, a, a, a be, reporter this uh, shit. So what did you say? Well, obviously, though, a politician wouldn't be coming off with the uh, answers that Dennis Rodman is either. Right. Yeah. About well, him I just being think aw he's awesome. Could you see a politician sitting down and going, he was awesome. <laughs> I must say, awesome. No, he's he, a good friend of mine. And the reporter probably wouldn't assert that the United States also has prison camps. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he meant it like that. I think what he said would do the same thing here. There was something about the phoniness. I'm sure the injustices that he perceives in our system. He probably was talking about that. And uh, what we were talking about, obviously, he's a little too retarded to bring up the fact that we do business with plenty of dictators and countries yeah. that have uh, imprisoned people on their political beliefs and, and whatnot. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So don't the one guy that gets in who Kim Jong Un is nice to don't come back and just go. Well, did you tell him he was a bad guy? Did you question his <laughs> human rights? You little fucking jizz drinker, shut the fuck up, <laughs> you jealous little bitch. <laughs> jizz drinker. He makes me sick. Hope he doesn't get that virus that Opie got. <laughs> <laughs> the smugness of Stephanopoulos is making me fucking wow. Physically, because you know this is just a basketball player yeah. that got in. So just look at it for what it is. It's a fucking a stupid little. Do you, Olive branch. It doesn't do you, mean much. But do you honestly think that if he didn't handle uh, Rodman this way, that he wouldn't have taken a load of shit for just letting Rodman say that he's awesome and that he's a friend yeah. and, you know, whatever about the death camps or fucking prison camps? Um, he would have been called out on the carpet you, as a right. journalist he might, you know if what? he didn't. Maybe say he would have been. Maybe he would have been. It just, maybe what's annoying me about Stephanopoulos is it's a mirror to how fucking selective the outrage is exactly. over the behavior of other world Un leaders. Yeah, and unfortunately, Rodman's too stupid to turn it back around and call him out on the fact that you don't, you never address diplomats in these horrid countries with horrid leaders uh, about what they're doing with these people. Yeah, but he probably thinks they're all awesome too. They might be awesome, mm -hmm. man. Awesome. Yeah. You uh, you know what? These guys, most of these leaders are charismatic people. When yeah, you meet them. Exactly. That's another thing. You're right. They have an ability to yeah. fucking captain. And you, and you realize you're talking to the leader of a country. So all mm -hmm. of them are a lot. I'm sure if you meet Ahmadinejad or fucking, uh, uh, you know, if you met Saddam Hussein, all of them are probably very, very awesome. captivating men and seem awesome. Yeah. That'd be great. Rodman through history. Hitler was awesome. <laughs> Me and Hitler sat down. We watched a basketball game. He's my friend. What about the killing of six million Jews? It's a, hey, you know, shit happens. One thing. One thing. You know something? We President, that here. President Roosevelt, call him. <laughs> call Hitler. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we... we, we Fucking, all right, whatever. I was going to make the same point again, so I yeah. caught myself. My apologies to the audience. <laughs> no. But can do with it. Uh, uh, someone who, hypothetically, is a murderer, who's your friend, is still a murderer. Well, you know what, dude? Seriously, you know what? I, I guess what? 
guess what? What I did, what I did was history. Oh. Was history, and guess what? It's just like we do over here in America, right? It's amazing that we have presidents over here do the same thing, right? It's amazing that Bill Clinton could do one thing, have sex with his secretary, and do one thing, <laughs> really get away with it, and still he uses be powerful. That? And that's How can you compare that to prison camps? No, prison camp do one thing. We don't need to do one thing. Object that. We don't need to do it. object that. Guess what? what? We do one thing. One thing. It's like a friend to friend, right? It's a friend to friend. He's a friend to me. That's about it. So you're going to go back? I'm gonna, yes, I am. I'm going to go back and do one thing and find out more what's really going on. Find out more. Okay, oh. next time you go back, you should bring this uh, report from the Human Rights Watch with you and maybe ask some questions about that. That might, uh, um, so might, that might make an uncomfortable basketball well, game. Thank you for that would on. make an uncomfortable second oh, half. I hate this fucking cock Yo, yo, sucker. Kim, Kim Jong-un. Um, yeah. <laughs> and, and there's the half. Uh, <laughs> the half is done. We'll be right back. Yo, Kim Jong-un, what's this? Um, and they're just kind of sitting like, <laughs> not the, looking at each other. Uh, what the fuck? Every time we look at the relationship we have with Saudi Arabia, you fucking cocksucker. Exactly. They fucking chop hands off in the middle of the town. <laughs> Women are put in jail if they're raped. They have rocks thrown at them. Yes. Shut it's, the fuck up. They caused it. Yeah, it's their fault. It's Shut their the fault. fuck up. Like, how much shit does Saudi Arabia own in this country? Uh, they probably own things that he's involved with. You go into the fucking CEO of, whatever, of these companies, and you go, yeah. you know who bought us? Yeah, yeah. That's what's bothering me so much. It's it is a hypocrisy. Phony fucking, this fucking fraudulent high road. My favorite part is Rodman saying he's going to go back and, and find out what's really going I'm on. I'm going to go back yeah. and find out what's really going yeah. on. <laughs> I, I broke the ice with the man. We watched some basketball. <laughs> now <laughs> I'm going to find out about uh, these, what the, the camps. And now he uh, feels comfortable, you know, touching on that subject because yeah, he's yeah. already broken the ice. Well, I'm going to find out about the camps. I'm going to find out about nuclear armaments. He said no. Uh, he said no. He don't want war. And we're going to watch a rom-com together. One, one thing. One thing. One thing. One he, thing, Kim, uh, One thing. He, he, how does Kim Jong-un <laughs> perceive him? <laughs> like, like, he must have been like, well, he put a retard. <laughs> that man is a stupid <laughs> man. <laughs> you know who the dummy is? Us for giving money to that country. Hmm. We're fucking dumb motherfuckers well, for giving the money. We fork it over so he stops his shenanigans. Again, f f what? We're, we're just we're bribing him to not get nukes? Yeah. Fuck us. Exactly Fuck what we were us. doing. You're right. Just fucking nudges. Yeah. Mind you, if he fires one off, or if it looks like he's going to fire one off, you level the shitty country. They've been testing missiles out and uh, missiles problem. that could probably... Yeah, well, they're, they're not going to hit California. <laughs> they're not hitting us. What if they do get technology that could reach uh, the West Coast of the United States? They're not going to do it. They're not going to do it. They don't want to do war. They're well, not going to, but they're not going to. The Russians didn't do it. The Chinese didn't do it. They had a lot more to lose than, than North Korea does. Nobody wants their population wiped out. Well, that's true. And China doesn't want him firing a nuke at us. That's true. Nobody yeah, wants right. him firing a nuke at us. Well, that's why when you had a completely insane leader like his father, um, there's no reasoning with him. But this guy, it does seem like there's a little more like wiggle room. But there was reasoning with him because he didn't do it. There was reasoning well, with him. Well, he didn't have the capability yet. But the, like all these guys, a lot of times, are just, they're just saying what they know they need to say. Mm -hmm. Hitler was a doer. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, but yes. he was. He, yeah, he yeah. just did shit. Mm -hmm. and, and fucking Stalin, these guys just did things. Yeah. They didn't fucking bark, and then as soon as someone else said something, they back up. That's how you know the difference between a true sociopath maniac mm, and right. a guy just fucking just talking shit. Point well taken. We should be like Michael Madsen. You're going to bark, little doggy, <laughs> or you're going to bite? <laughs> you bark all day, little dog. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's... uh. Interesting take on that. I haven't seen any of the news talk shows in the morning um, addressing it quite like that, Jimmy. You're, um, you throw a nice twist on these things. Just driving me fucking... This, not even the questions he's asking. Yeah. It's, it's the smugness. It is. Thinking smug. he's just talking to this fucking lower life form. Like, I, I, Stephanopoulos makes me physically well, maybe you ill. you can bring this report to him next time. Yeah, it, just like that fucking cunt boy attitude. <laughs> Whereas if it was Barbara Walters that went over, and she just had... A, a friendly meeting with him just mm -hmm. to break the ice. This jerk off might mention this stuff, but he would never talk to her in that condescending manner. Well, when uh, what about when Jane Fonda came back from North Vietnam um, and said pretty much the same thing that their people are wonderful people, uh, their leaders are awesome. Uh, I don't think she used that word, but uh, she she sat down on an anti aircraft. Absolutely uh, disgusting. Um, but since we're not at war, does it make it any? 
any better that you're pretty much just spreading propaganda about much what better. great guy that's much better yeah because aren't we still technically at war with north korea uh well it's kind of a yeah there, there was the never, armistice or whatever it was kind of a, a treaty but not a there wasn't a complete end, end uh, secession of um uh yeah of aggression or and jane or... fonda was denying that our soldiers were being tortured we mm -hmm. had guys over there being tortured and she was she was giving propaganda that was that was contradicting what mm. our tortured soldiers were saying it was a big difference between actively being in a war yeah. where guys from long island are being shipped over and fucking killed in a jungle right to what's happening here it's a huge difference mm. all right i think you know i, I think she, like i think she should have been uh, shot for what she did yeah, you, yeah. you think that was yeah. like uh, treasonous? Yeah. Uh, believe me, many people thought so, and a lot of people these days still fucking yeah, can't stand it because of it. Yeah, she did I look a good though. On the um, oh, did she look good? <laughs> yeah, fuck her. And I got a picture <laughs> and I got it signed. Hi, you did. hi, Jane. Love you on a golden pond. <laughs> <laughs> fucking where am I? Am <laughs> annoyed, Jane? Uh, what's the story with Bill Cosby? What's he doing up there on uh, CNN? Civil rights. Civil rights. Yeah. Yeah, they had that. Um, what was that? A march. Down there, Selma. That was, what was that? Long, uh, that was a long time ago. Um, oh, right, that thing. No, they had a uh, an anniversary of Bloody Sunday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They called it the um, yeah. marches down there in uh, Alabama. Hey, Matt on Twitter. Fifty year. Uh, uh -oh. Forgive me for addressing one uh -oh. dummy on Twitter. That's okay. I love dummies. Fuck us. You voted for Obama. I didn't vote for Obama, what? Matt. What? I'll accept your apology in a moment. I did not <laughs> vote for Barack Obama or anybody. I did not vote. Yeah. Yes. Well, you didn't. That's no, right. I didn't. No, well, you didn't vote against him either, though, Jimmy. That's true. No, I didn't. Hmm. Just didn't vote. Exactly. That implies everything that not voting implies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I happen to like Obama. I really, yeah. yeah, man. And it's I hate his tax policies. I hate them as much as you do. I yeah, hate the death terrible. tax, but I don't terrible. know why. There's something about him I really, really like. I don't know. I think a lot of people. I was kind of seeing more that he's just a perpetual campaigner at this point, and um, he's not really, not really doing, he's not really doing good for the country. Uh, we were still in a fucking economic downturn, and people are saying the only way to get back from it is through like consumer spending, but no one's got money to spend. And then after the payroll tax went up for everybody, and they're seeing less money in their check, they're buying, they're pretty much just buying what they need, and not buying any of those like items that. Get the economy going. The, you know, all the little wees, <laughs> the little we we use, and and uh, fucking. <laughs> I'm helping the country. You are. <laughs> <laughs> you, that's that's what you should say. I can picture Iraq saying that as he's in the basement with a rope around a stool. <laughs> I'm helping. <laughs> helping. I'm helping the country. <laughs> I don't mean that, Eric. I don't want anything bad to happen. Of course not. I'm just kidding. Of course not.